Hello everybody, this is Joe Neal, and I'm talking to you from a day when I think the temperature is going to be in the 50s, rather than a day like this when it was in teens, but uh, this is about winter and how we awaken in the winter, and so it's fun to get out and kind of look at things in this time of year, and that's what this program is about. So, we're in the Ozarks of Northwest Arkansas. Most of you probably know this plant. This is serviceberry, or some people call it sarvis. Heard it called a lot of different things, but boy, you know you're in spring when the serviceberry trees burst into bloom like that. And look at all that nice color in the lichens. Mm. In the early part of the spring, some years we still have purple finches and they enjoy the buds on these trees when the trees start to bud out. And the great blue herons actually start nesting before there's any leaves. That's a sycamore tree. And how about those beautiful feathers on that great blue heron? That's for the nesting season. They're called nuptial plumes. And this is a this is a, a hazelnut, and that's the female flower on the top, and the male catkin on the bottom. And this is a lot bigger than they actually look in nature, but isn't that a gorgeous thing? And it's a sign that spring is coming. And there's that female flower a little close up. So it's hazelnuts, and some of the early plants. This one, lots of people that are interested in native plants always go out. You know, they just we just want to reassure ourselves that spring is really coming. And so you look for this peppered salt. And the great horned owls are nesting. You see that maple tree is just starting to flower out. And there's a great horned owl on a nest. And some of the early butterflies. And this is one of the earliest plants that we typically enjoy, white trout lily. And this is something I always really enjoy in the Ozarks in the area part. These are daffodils, which of course aren't native plants. But you know, some pioneer person probably moved into the Ozarks 150 years ago and brought some bulbs from home, wherever they were from, and planted them in front of their house. The house is gone but these flowers are still out there in spring. And of course that's what they wanted was some beautiful color in the spring. You know what this flower is? I mean, this is actually a common native flower. They're, so we know what this plant is and we know all these butterflies. Why are they there? And look, look at this cool frog. Of course, these are the dogwoods when they just first start. And the red buds are early in the spring. And I find myself, you know, at that time of the year, kind of like when winter is changing and you have more warm days and so you see more flowers when you're out that I don't know it kind of it it kind of builds a little bit of a fire in me I'm not sure exactly what the right word is but I feel a lot of excitement when I see the earth starting to express itself again with these really delicate beautiful creatures and there's all kinds of them And this is another one of those plants, you know, the house is long abandoned, but the daffodils still come up where people put them a long time ago so they'd have something really beautiful to see in the spring. And you know, the relatives of these trout lilies, like 
way back in time type relatives. They were probably blooming when those people planted those daffodils and they just keep coming up year after year. It's a kind of continuity in our lives, you know. Once you know where to look for these and you go out. And by the way, I might have taken this photograph because of the leaf that's in the bottom center really kind of looks like trout, doesn't it? Like trout skin. Turkey tail, fungi. And look at these amazing creatures. The goldfinches don't look quite as gold as they're going to be, but they're looking for something here. Can you see what it is they're looking for? Well, there's algae growing in that. It's a little seat by a creek. And they're looking for algae, and they eat that algae. And raise your hand if you know what this plant is and what the bird is. Okay, for one thing it's a Harris's Sparrow, which is a bird that spends the winter here, but then it goes way back up north to nest. And that plant, that's poison ivy. It's one of their favorite foods in the winter. And sap suckers come down for the winter and they're looking for sap, drip making sap wells. And this is a close up of the sap wells. So it's pretty good and you see several several other creatures, not just that big fly, but there's some smaller things in there too. So there's a pretty complex food web here. And look at that cross bill. Red cross bills come down sometimes in winter at this time of the year. <coughs> and a rusty blackbird with a dogwood fruit. And look at all that fruit. We used to call these fence lizards, I think they're called prairie lizards now, but they're pretty tolerant. They stay out pretty late in the fall and they get busy pretty early in the spring. And do you know this one? It's witch hazel. We have two kinds of witch hazel, one that blooms in the fall, so you might find it out at Hobbs State Park in November, and another one that doesn't bloom until we have real winter, like January and February. That's witch hazel in the creek bottom. And these are bird's foot violets. They're pretty early spring wildflower. And can you see the bird in there? <clears throat> you really have to look, which is what I think nature intended. It's a Louisiana water thrush. And they're one of the earliest of the neotropical migratory songbirds to make it back into the Ozarks. And by the time they get back, the red-shouldered hawks have already are already nesting and the service berries are really in a glorious place aren't they look at that and butterflies are out the first hardy ones and this is something I really love and that is the early growth of pines so from a seed Look what's happening. Even after fire, even after death of a big tree, all these young pine trees. And as you keep going out day after day, you keep finding interesting things. 
And with all the interest that we now have, and we know that we've lost a lot of our pollinators, I always am interested in looking at plants like these trout lilies to see who pollinates trout lilies early in the spring. Like, you know, who can take the cold weather and function well enough to actually pollinate. And one of the really early ones, they're kind of, um, well, you know, they're called buttercups and there are a lot of different ones, but this is a particularly early one. And I often go down to Devil's Den State Park to try to find this one. Of course, we have bluebirds all year, but that's pretty dramatic, isn't it? With snow on a branch and those really fabulous colors. And of course, well, it starts to warm up. We start getting some of these. And I think these are from Cave Springs. This is Trillium, Pusillium variety, Ozarcanum, the Ozark Trillium. After it looks like it must have been raining, I've forgotten for sure about that, but. Just an incredible floral parade. This is red buckeye in, you know, by the time these start blooming in the spring, a lot of neotropical migratory birds are moving through our area headed north. And I have orioles and hummingbirds and others that probe these flowers. Red buckeye, I think I said red buckeye. And that's it. I appreciate you uh, watching the program.